this is this is this is Hey, hey, welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Mike Herrera. Great to be back, back at it. MXPeaks.com for all your vinyl needs, all your t-shirt needs, hoodies, gadgets. We even have those like finger poppers, those like things that like fidget poppers for kids because my kids are obsessed with fidget poppers. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'll get some for MXPX. Um, Anyway, thank you guys so much for supporting MXPX. Um, mxpeaks.com, all of that. I appreciate you guys. It's the best thing to do, uh, aside from obviously just listening to the music. Uh, do what you love. Listen to the songs you love. We appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thanks for coming to our shows. We, we played a couple shows, Anaheim, California, April 1st, and Tempe, Arizona, April 2nd. Both shows were packed, had the best time. It was a blast. So thank you, thank you for supporting. I always, I always get a little nervous. I mean, I guess I wasn't nervous about the sold-out show, but like Sometimes I still get nervous, like wondering, are people going to show up? Um, even when I know tickets have been bought, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's like insecurity thing, you know, I don't know. But um, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's get into this podcast. I wanted to talk for a second about a TV show I've been watching because it's literally just taking over my brain. Like, I'm thinking about it during the day. You know when you, like, see a movie or a TV show and you're just like, you keep thinking about it? And you just can't let it go. And you want to know what's up. Like, what is really going on here? And, you know, I I watch a a very wide variety of TV, um, or I have over the years, right? Like, I'm not just into, like, horror. I'm not just into drama. I'm into, like, kind of just, it just depends on what it is, right? Like, um, so the the show I've been watching that I want to talk about is called Severance. Severance. That's right. Um, there's a movie from like, I don't know, eight years ago, 2014, I think. Uh, maybe, uh, that's not it. It's the TV show that's out in 2022. And it's on Apple TV Plus. And I'm not trying to, s- I'm not sponsored by Apple TV or anything. I'm not trying to get you to join Apple TV. I happen to have it saw this random show and we just put it on, uh, my wife and I, and um, just instantly hooked, instantly hooked. Let me, so for those that that maybe are watching it, I'm not going to give away any plot points. I'm not going to spoil anything. So if you want to watch it eventually, or even if you don't have Apple Plus, I'm sure you can rent it um, if you really wanted to get into it. But it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Some people will probably think it's boring or super weird or just like, creepy and they're not into it it's not scary like there's nothing really like scary about it but it's unsettling it's unsettling so let me i was reading an article today and 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 to be clear holly and i have watched eight out of nine episodes there's nine episodes in season one and we have not watched the finale yet we'll watch that probably tomorrow or something i'll let you know next week how (laughs) if i liked it i'm sure i will um, so I haven't even watched the full, the full season. So like, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to tell you like the plot points. Um, but I do want to read you kind of like tell you what it's about slightly. Cause this isn't going to ruin anything. You find all this out very quickly when you, the first episode you find this out. So, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to ruin anything. All right. This is from the verge. I don't know. I just found an article from the verge. Um, But I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a blurb from the article. Severance takes place in a world where a new procedure, the titular, 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 severance, the titular. I know that's that means like a title that kind of doesn't mean anything or there's a few different definitions for that. I'm just not quite sure how to say the word titular. I don't think I've ever had to say it out loud before. Titular. Um. But I think that's right. <laughs> let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, okay, let me, let me start over. Severance takes place in a world where a new procedure, the titular severance, allows workers to split their lives into two. Into two after a little brain surgery. So they essentially become two people. One who lives a relatively normal life 
and another whose existence, the entire existence, resides in a purgatory-like office. Now, the office itself is super weird and unsettling, and let me just read a little more. Because of this, the design of the office was extremely important. Uh, it needed to feel like a place outside of time and space. I think we're it's a uh, Hindle, uh, one of the guys that w works on the show. Uh, so because so let me let me so because of this, the design of the office was extremely important. It needed to feel like a place outside of time and space. Um, you have to make sure that the inside and outside world are different enough that you're immersed in the world. So you feel like you're severed when you're down in the office with, with those people. So um, that's, that's basically what the show is. It's like you're, there's these people that have had a procedure and you could imagine that it's super weird because they don't know, you know, if your normal person doesn't know what your work person is doing. And the person that's working has no idea if your outside person ha has kids, has a family, has a, like a wife or a husband or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or nothing like that. Like, you don't know who your friends are. Now, <laughs> as you can imagine, the bosses are super creepy and oppressive and like they're nice, but they're mean. There's just like, there's just a lot of weirdness going on. Now the cast is, psh, I mean, so far it's perfect as far as I'm concerned. Um, the people in it, Adam Scott, you might know him from, he's been in a ton of stuff, but I knew him from Parks and Rec, TV show uh, 10, or 10 or more years ago, but really great TV show, I loved it. Uh, Parks and Rec, really good. Uh, a, a guy named Zach Cherry, uh, a girl named Britt Lower, and then John Turturro is, is the fourth sort of like main character, and he's really amazing. Um, who else is in this? There's a few other, uh, a few people you would know. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Christopher Walken. He plays, uh, well, I won't, uh, I won't say. Christopher Walken. Um, why am I not finding all these people? Patricia Arquette, Patricia Arquette. That was the other one I was looking for. Um, obviously, she's been in a million things. It's just super creepy, and like I said, it's not scary at all. But like, there's just weird things, and and you want to know what's happening the whole time. And I love shows like that. I'd love to. I can't wait to f one finish the finish the final episode, and then maybe have some conversations with some friends that have seen it too. Like that's what I'm looking forward to. So if anybody's watching the show, please let me know. Maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe we could. Maybe you could call in, leave a voicemail about it. Don't do any spoilers or anything. But like, if you have a thought about what's really going on, I think that's cool. Um, call me. Leave me a voicemail. The number is three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. Okay. Leave me a voicemail. We'll talk about whatever topics you want: severance, punk rock, amps, bass guitars. I, it doesn't matter. I love it all. Um, <laughs> wild animals outside your door. Um, call me again. Call me. 360-830-6660. Hope you got it written down. You can also find the number on the show notes. Uh, it's on every single show note, so you can always find it. Um, but Severance, I mean, I, I know that I've heard that there's going to be a season two. Um I don't like to even think about season two when I'm still watching a season one of something, unless, of course, it's something that's already had many seasons. But this is a brand new show. In my opinion, I there's only, I don't know, there's only like a handful of super quality shows airing at any given time, right? Um, and I do like my TV to be excellent. I don't like to watch crappy TV shows, shows that are not well done, like, a good example of that would be um, Goliath. If anybody's seen the, the series Goliath, uh, it's Billy Bob Thornton, and the first season of Goliath is amazing. So good. 
highly recommend. But, <laughs> and it's a big but, there's three seasons total. It's on Amazon Video. Uh, a lot of people have Amazon because they'll have Amazon Prime or something, and, and it's free with Amazon Prime. But um, only the first season, which is amazing, is worth watching. Season two, it goes downhill. The production's not good. The acting's not good. The storyline isn't that good. The storyline probably is okay, but just the – it just isn't is – it, it's not – it's not executed right. And there's a third season. Didn't even bother to check it out. I heard it's like slightly better than the second season, but still not great. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really, I don't know. I just, my time is valuable. Like everybody's time is valuable. Time is the only thing really we can't, we can't make more of, right? I'm sure there's other things I haven't thought of, but um, so I don't want to waste my time if it's not a good show. And, and, so you know when I when we first watched the Severance show, like it just I knew right away this is my new favorite show. And sometimes it takes a little while to get into a show once you get the the plot going, and then you're like, okay, I want to know what happens. But this show was like you don't even know the plot, and you're just you're hooked. That's me. I don't know. I'd love to hear anybody's thoughts on that. Um, if you've seen the show, what you thought of it. Um, Let's do it. Let's do it soon. Let's talk soon. Um, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really. Sorry, I just moved that. It's going to be really annoying that that uh, there's no more episodes once I'm done with this this first season. It's just like, ah. I think I'm starting to drive Holly crazy too because she really likes the show, but I think I like it so much more than her that she is starting to get annoyed because I'm like asking her questions. I'm like, what do you think about this? What do you think? Could it be this, this, this? And uh, <laughs> and then when we're watching it, of course, the kids are sort of like doing their thing. And like there's some parts where probably kids shouldn't watch. So we're like, pause it. Hey, kids, can you go in the other room for like 10 minutes? You know, and, and they do. And then it's fine. But um, I know I've been talking about this a lot. And I'm not saying a lot about it because I don't want to screw it up for you guys. Ben Stiller is the main director. He didn't direct every single episode. Um, there's another director uh, named Oaf McArdle. It's an Irish name. I, I've never heard that name. It's a woman. Uh, she's directed some YouTube videos and a bunch of other things, but <laughs> I don't know how to say that. But Ben Stiller uh, uh, directed more. He directed six of the, of the nine episodes, and I was very surprised. Not that Ben Stiller's not a great director. He's been directing so many movies over the years and TV shows and, and all that. But uh, he just, I'm impressed. I was impressed. I was like, Ben Stiller, you're a comedian, but this is, this is some deep psychological human experience. And it's, it's all things modern yet retro and like, I don't know. It's just it's a vintage. It's it's almost it's just got things that you just haven't seen, you know. And I think the fact that it's not on Netflix is probably why no one's heard of it, because if this show was on Netflix, everybody would wa be watching this show. Everybody. I, I just can't even believe it. And that happens plenty with uh, other shows as well. Other great shows. They just it's just not known about. But um, I guess I'm just getting the word out on some good TV. Right, <laughs> the show is called Severance. It's on Apple TV Plus. Um, yeah, well done, well done, you people, cast and crew, Apple TV, Apple TV. I gotta say, like I said, they're not sponsoring this podcast. That no one is. If anything, you are by listening, um, by watching. If you're watching on YouTube, which you can, my my YouTube is my career video, and. Uh, I tr usually try to put most of these these podcasts nowadays on my YouTube channel. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is just like I, I, I'm blown away by this TV show, Severance. It's not sponsored. Apple TV is not sponsored. And, and Apple TV is putting out so many good shows. There's um, another show that I'm definitely going to check out called We Crashed. Um, haven't seen anything yet, but it just looks, it looks like it's right up my alley. It's the type of TV show I like. I like to see, there was a podcast called Startup, uh, 
years and years ago. And I was obsessed with that podcast as well because it was like, it was the ins and outs of starting a business, a major business. And it just so happened to be a podcasting business or whatever. So it was super interesting on multiple fronts. But um, I don't know why I mentioned that. <laughs> but <laughs> ah, All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's let's move on. I wanted to I wanted to read you guys something from my journal because I can because this is my podcast and um you know just in case you think oh all he does is watch TV and then do podcasts no I I, I write in my journal as well <laughs> so uh somebody asked Online, they didn't ask on the podcast or, or on the voicemail, but they asked, "How do you love Mondays? I hate them. It's like Terminator one, Terminator one at the end where he just won't die." I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, he goes on to say, "Every Monday, it starts up a terrible machine all over again. Why are you so high and mighty loving Mondays?" Uh, Jamie from the interwebs. Um, it's funny. I I I I don't remember where I had this. I put. I grabbed this and I put it in my notes to use for later, and here it is. I don't remember. Ex I think it was probably Facebook or something, but thank you for the question. I actually wrote – I had already written a journal entry about Mondays, and so I found it, and now I'm going to read it to you. So this is from my journal. It was just meant to be like my thoughts. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I wrote a journal entry about Mondays. So here it is. Um, there are many reasons why Mondays are my favorite day of the week. One, it's that week's morning. You've got the whole week ahead of you. I tend to be optimistic in the mornings especially, so this makes a whole lot of sense to me. My brain works in very strange, unorganized, yet very particular ways. Monday is the week's morning time. Sunday is the week's wee hours of the night. You just want to chill on a Sunday. Number two. I'm less stressed on a Monday because I've got the whole week ahead to worry about that big TPS report. I'll do it manana. <laughs> also, see number one. Uh, TPS report, obviously a quote from the movie Office Space. Great movie. Nothing like the Severance Show, both about work and life balance and, cra you know, but, yeah, anyway. <laughs> number three. Monday is against the grain. It, sorry, let me start over. Monday is against the grain day. Most people tend to hate Mondays as if having a case of the Mondays is a bad thing. Another little quote from uh, Office Space. Um, I, need to, I need to make this stuff bigger. It's hard to see. <laughs> All right. It was very tiny on the screen, so now it's bigger. Um, all right. Number three. Oh, I'm still on number three, the case of the Mondays. Uh, so there may be a tendency for me to gravitate away from popular days such as Friday or Saturday. So I'm against the grain on that. Number four, Mondays are for planning. I love planning more than carrying out the plans. <laughs> it's kind of strange, and it doesn't pay as well as actually doing the plans. But uh, nonetheless... I never mind planning something on a Monday and then executing the plans on a more popular day. Yeah. So number five, Monday is for work. I'm always working and most others are on a Monday, uh, are on a Monday as well. This means I don't worry about businesses being closed for the weekend, how many times you have had some, uh, how many times have you had something done or fixed but it's a Friday afternoon. Sorry, let me read this again. How many times have you had to have get something done or fixed? Because, but it's a Friday afternoon and the dudes work in the tire place. Pull anchor super early so they can catch an early weekend. Sorry, I'm like confused by my own writing because I'm like writing things like pull anchor on a early weekend. I get what I meant, but I just why did I write that? Um, 
All right, let me tr- let me start over. Let me not start over. Let me uh, keep reading. Um, so how many times have you had to get something done or fixed, but it's a Friday afternoon and the dude's working or women working, the tire place or whatever, pull anchor super early so they can catch an early weekend? I hate that. Therefore, I love Mondays. People generally work a full day on a Monday. This doesn't mean I want people out there that hate their jobs to suffer. I just appreciate people that do a service to others, even if it's ultimately for the paycheck. I appreciate you. All too often, that check is too small for our jobs to continue to be utterly meaningless. Even the trash worker makes a positive difference in the lives of their customers by removing the trash from our dwellings. Almost everything in service, sorry, almost everything is in service to one another, whether we like it or not. We're born into this indentured servitude to pay taxes forever as long as ye shall live number six if i was a long one and a little confusing but i think you get it basically monday is for work whether we like it or not uh six mondays are often my weekend i'm a musician and i often play shows on the weekend pretty straightforward pretty simple number seven Mondays are a reminder. It's a new week, another opportunity to be ready, to learn and build, to move. I build ideas that grow into objects, sounds, and images. We all do this in our own ways. I call this personal pyramids, our own masterpiece, a pinnacle, a high point, something to work toward. Innovation, always. Block by block, we lay our foundation then stack each moment higher on top of each other to form our existence. Our experience forms our existence. They add up to an unfathomable, uh, they add up to an unfathomable amount of depth and experience. I hope. Uh, some moments are long forgotten, but they hold a place inside our personal pyramid the same way a memory of your last meal would. It all adds up in aggregate. Some moments more themselves than others, the latter being less than themselves, or rather unmomentous. This is myself, stacking, being me. Now, that's, uh, I didn't write anything else. I just, I did the seven points and then done. But, uh, <laughs> but I love Mondays. I really do. So Mondays is when, um, you know, once I left Adobe Radio from the podcast, though some people probably didn't even realize I was ever on Adobe Radio for the podcast, but at one point I started my podcast in 2013 about, and then a little while later I moved my podcast from just being independent to Adobe Radio. So it would air on Adobe Radio and then it would air everywhere else like it always does. But but uh, that was on Fridays, and I, it always kind of bugged me that I was like on Fridays because I was like sometimes I'd be playing sh- – well, a lot of times I'd be playing shows, and I'd be busy, and I, you know. And so I moved – once I left Adobe Radio, I moved it to Mondays. And so now the podcast comes out every Monday unless it doesn't come out or something if there's not a new episode. But uh, if there's a new episode, it's coming out on a Monday, and that's also another reason why I love Mondays and why you should love Mondays too. I appreciate you. All right. That's about that's about it for Mondays. Um, one other little journal entry I found while I was doing this, this research stuff that I thought I'd just read to you guys because it was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> how I love how how I fell in love with skateboarding. I once skateboarded on country roads six miles from my house on Chico to my then girlfriend's house. This was in late elementary school, probably like fifth or sixth grade, something like that. She called and said her parents were gone for the day. I got my first makeout session that day. That's right. And that's how I fell in love with skateboarding. Nothing more. I didn't write anything more, but like I seriously skated so many miles on just like just a normal road with like no real like a tiny shoulder, no sidewalk, nothing, just county road country road and uh hey no regrets let's get into some voicemails all right let's get into to uh to 
you guys. Let's get into some questions. We got we got a couple here. Mike Herrera, this is uh, Evan Connor from Woodland Hills, California. Um, I'm calling um, with uh, some good and some bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. I am totally bummed that I didn't get to go to the show because I wasn't feeling good on the way there. Uh, uh, I got sure. two clean COVID tests and. I just didn't feel good on the way there, so instead of risking it and getting everyone else sick, I decided to turn around and go home. Um, I was really bummed I didn't get to see you, but uh, in all in all, I think it was a good thing that I didn't go because I'm nursing a cold right now. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to ask you if you have any – I know you were really excited for this show, so I want to know if you have any uh, – you probably answered this question before, but if you have any uh, – be- for show rituals, uh, vocal warm-ups, things of that nature, you know, uh, just the things that you and the band do or, the, you know, your PX does um, before uh, big shows like the, the one on April 1st. Um, thank you, man. Uh, uh, take care. Uh, keep doing what you do. Uh, it's very important to me. Your music always has been. Uh, thank you for being you and uh, rock and roll. Thanks, Evan. Thank you for being you as well. So sorry you, you didn't make the show, man. That's such a bummer. Um, but I'm, I appreciate you, you know, kind of doing the right thing, right? Like a lot of people would just struggle, struggle through that, kind of just be like, uh, uh, all right, I'm just going to go anyway because I really don't want to miss this. Um, that's the thing. I mean, that's probably a new thing now that we've been through COVID and the pandemic and the lockdowns and all that. And I wonder if people are now, even if you just have a cold, you're just like, man, I don't feel good. I'm not going to go tonight. I'm, I'm going to sit it out. I don't want to get people sick. I'd like to think that that's a new thing. And, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, I haven't had that experience yet where I, I, I've definitely gotten COVID, um, maybe twice um w- only one time was an actual test but the first time was was uh literally right after right after our, our sh- you know everything shut down and where everybody was locked down in 2020 um yeah but anyway back to your question you you wanted to know evan you wanted to know about pre-show rituals anything that we do with the whole team M- team mxpx um I love this question because there's so many different things we could talk about. There, there's a lot of rituals that we do. Uh, the most kind of interesting one, probably, I'll start with this one, uh, and then I'll get into like actual like technical musician stuff and all that. But um, something that we do every show is uh, Tom, our guitar player, will take the set list and we'll be like backstage at our, in our dressing room, and he'll take the set list and we'll go over it with. With all, you know, the whole band. So it's Yuri, me, Chris, Tom, and we're, and we've always done this uh, even before Chris was around, but uh, he'll he'll take the set list, and Tom always does it because, I don't know, he's just, he's always done it. Uh, <laughs> but he'll go and he'll take the set list and he'll go, all right, we start, we do the intro, we go to this song, we go to this song next, we go straight into this one, I start this next song, Yuri starts this song, and so like he goes through and he like, we kind of just like do a play-by-play of each song, who starts it, what we do after the song, what goes, you know, how we get into the next part, and things sometimes change, of course, you know, we don't always follow it, but um, for the most part, it just gets our, it gets us uh, on track to to do the set, the way we want to do the set, and um I wonder, you know, I, I don't know. I've never seen any other band do that. I'm sure bands do something like that. But this is something that I've literally only seen MXPX do. Um, but at the same time, you know, who knows? I mean, there's a million bands out there. Somebody's probably done it like that. But, you know, we'll we'll do that. And, and that kind of gets us pumped. You know, we're just doing it like after everybody's all warmed up and everything. So I'll, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. But, um you know, just just to make sure we we remember. Okay, this song we have a different tuning, so we're gonna tune. Uh, Yuri's gonna hit the kick. Uh, Mike's gonna talk when he announces when he says this or that or whatever. Then we'll come in. 
Um, you know, so it's just like it gets us pumped. It gets us ready. And then we'll be like, all right, guys, you know, and this isn't a ritual because sometimes we don't do it and we don't say the exact same things, but we'll all just kind of huddle up and we'll be like, hey, guys, so glad to be here with you. Love you guys. Let's go out there and kick some ass. And we just punk rock. Boom. You know, we do it. Um, Goldfinger does a kind of a similar thing, not with a set list, but we just do we, we, we all huddle up together and, and John will do like the AA prayer thing. <laughs> Uh, alcohol anonymous um you know the the you know just th the thing that you say when you're in aa that's what he does and then he'll be like c it's a way to sort of like just be grateful for the crowd that's in front of you for the people you know you're going to perform in front of people and you want to be grateful you don't want to take that for granted and i love that you know and i love that too so yeah uh, we mxpx does a different we don't do the AA prayer or anything but <laughs> we just do our own version our like punk rock and like let's go out there let's do this can't can't believe we're here again or can't believe we're here for the first time or whatever it is you know wherever we are but um yeah so so that's really uh the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to pre-show rituals another you know some other things that I do vocal warm-ups um so about an hour before we start playing, that's when I'm really, really starting to pay attention. Now, I like to go out and watch the opening band, so I'll go out and watch the opening band, then I'll watch the main support band, and, and then we're ready to go or whatever. But um, Or if there's more bands, I'll, I'll try to catch them. But I'll, I'll usually go out and catch as much as I can, and then I'll go back, make sure that everything's good to go, and then I'll go back and watch a little more. But the closer it gets to our set, the less I'm watching like when you know when we're we were just playing uh the this last show we did last shows we did uh with Zebrahead, Bad Cop Bad Cop and Mercy Music, you know, I watched all three bands but uh you know just certain parts of their sets. And so I could I could go warm up, start singing. I I grab an acoustic guitar and I do scales. So I'll go me um me 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 moo 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 ma 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 get your voice going it gets your vocal cords going but throughout the day um like if i've got issues with my voice i won't talk a lot but throughout the day if my voice feels good the first thing i do when i wake up in the morning of a show day not just a show day but any day where i, I know i'm gonna sing so a recording day i'll wake up in the morning and i'll go I'll do my falsetto, and and if my voice is really rough and tired, I don't get much clear falsetto. It'll be like, eh, eh, eh. it won't be. E, e, e. So like that tells me where I'm at, like the scale of okay. If I'm like, e, oh, pff, I'm good. I'll be singing like a bird tonight, or but if I'm like, eh, eh, I'm like, ooh, I need to rest. I need to rest my body. I need to drink more water. I need to, you know, like do all these things to get ready for the show tonight. Because there's been shows where I've had no voice. And you do these rituals, you do these voice sort of like real gentle warm-ups, you rest a lot, and you can make it happen just for a little bit. And, of course, after you sing for a while, your voice starts getting weaker and weaker and more tired. But those are the scenarios that, that I think about, you know, because – not just being being sick is probably the worst thing for your voice, but being stressed, being tired, not having enough sleep, um, obviously being hungover is terrible. But um, you know the stressed part, like being nervous, is not good for your voice. Like the more nervous I am, the less good my voice is. And I gotta say, I was not nervous for these last shows, not at all. Although sometimes I get nervous for MXPX shows that n I was not. Um, which is great. It's a great thing. And and it really affects your voice, uh, my voice anyway, if I'm nervous. I, it, it goes quicker. Um, so, yeah. So, so back to the actual – oops. Back to the actual show. Um, so, dip, so going back to these last shows, when I was warming up, I felt great. Voice was fine. Um, I'd grab a guitar and I'd do these scales and I'll – do 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 da 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 da. So, 
it doesn't really matter what you do. If you do mi, mi, ma, mo, mu, all that, you can do like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, you know, like that kind of stuff. Da, 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 and back down. And it also warms up my fingers because I'll, I'll, I'll play the guitar scales and it gets my fingers moving. It gets my, my brain in line to play. I don't usually even grab the bass before because, I mean, I've played the bass so many times. It feels perfect to me. So uh, I don't need that to warm up. I'm just ready to go on that. But I do like to, to get my fingers moving a little bit. Uh, exercise. I, I got to be awake. You know, I, I got to tell you, like, a funny thing, and, and a lot of musicians feel this way, feel the same way I do. But, like, when we sound check, uh, we usually sound check around 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon get done around 3, um, 3.30, depending on the schedule. Uh, the schedule changes, but you're like, all right, sounds great. Let's do this. And and then you have to wait like six hours, sometimes six hours. Sometimes it's four or five hours, but usually it's around six hours. If you're the headliner, you, sh you, you know, you got some bands on the bill and ah, it's hard to wait. So my point here is, Whenever we do these sound checks, I'm like, okay, can't we just play right now? Let, ever, let everybody in. Let's go. Let's play. I want to play and just be done with it because we're ready. But no, you got to wait. And so you kind of get – when you wait, you get tired. You talk to people. Now, some people can talk to people all night, and it's energizing to them. Some people talk to strangers, meet new people, this, that, meet – just talking to old friends, talking to new friends. It's tiring. You get tired after a while. And uh, all of the above happens at a show, of course. Um, and then you're just kind of waiting around and you have food. You might go out to eat and you eat too much and you're just like, oh, I feel lethargic and slow. And, and that's something you have to keep in mind. And you, know, you can't eat too soon before the show and you can't eat too much. Certain types of food might not be good for your voice and, and all of the above, right? So like, I just want I just want to go, but you can't go. You got to wait. And because of that, you have to I have to not probably not everybody, but I have to re energize myself. Like I was energized right after sound check, but now I'm kind of tired again. I'm getting sleepy. I just want to go to bed. And so Tom and I used to go run outside like if, if it was easy to get out of the club, we'd go outside and just run around the venues, run around the parking lots. Run down the street, get your get your blood pumping, get your heart rate up. Uh, do a little, you know, do some like sprints, not like full on sprints, but just kind of fast running, uh, push ups, any kind of like jumping around, stretches. I stretch all my legs, arms, hands, neck, back. You have to stretch everything, and and it's been like this for a while. But um, the most important thing is is my voice, you know, and so I, I do the physical thing first and then I start throughout the day, uh, I'll, I'll hum like if my voice is feeling good. I'll just mm, mm, hum. So there's just all these things that that kind of come together and stack into a pre-show ritual for me. Um, but, you know, sometimes I don't run around outside and sometimes I don't do as much physical stretching a as I should. And, and then, you you know, you go out on, on stage and you're like, oh, I'm tired. But th that all goes away anyway, you know. Like, I guess even if I didn't stretch out, it'd probably, probably be okay. But it's always better to stretch. It makes me feel more awake, more energized. And I'm going for the long haul. You know, you got to pace yourself a little bit for the full set and uh that's just what it is what else i mean pre-show rituals we uh you know <laughs> goldfinger charlie always Char charlie almost always takes a shower if there's a shower charlie uh paulson will take a shower and i was always like why are you taking a shower like but then you know, in, in my later years, showers are great. Like, I love taking a shower to wake up. And so I think that's wha why he does it. Um, and so sometimes I will take a shower before a show. Not usually 
at the gig. I'll, I'll be at the hotel, and before I leave to go to the show, like if we're at soundcheck and then we go back to the hotel for a little bit, I'll take a shower because that's a reset for me. It's like waking up for a brand new day, and, and I'm energized and ready to rock. So there's another kind of weird thing that sometimes I'll do, but uh, not all the time, not, not always. But the set list, the set list run through, let's just call it a set list run through, that is something we do before every single show. It's a great ritual. But everybody else, we all do our own sort of stretches together, but not together, like in the same room, but on our own. Um, it works out. It works out pretty good. That was a long. That was a long answer. Let's get to. <laughs> I guess let's get to at least one more. I'll get a couple. We'll get a couple more in. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? Uh, I just want to say uh, my name is Ryan Hayden. You've been one of my heroes for like twenty-five years now. Uh, slowly going the way of the Buffalo. You know, can transport me back in time like no other album. And it can actually make me kind of teary if I let it. <laughs> uh, I was fortunate to meet you. The only time I saw MXPX ever was back at the Saratoga Springs Warp Tour in 2000. He would just come off stage, and you were nice enough to talk and walk with me for a minute. And I walked right into a tent pole because I was just, like, laser-locked on meeting you. <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually regret that day. I went to you guys' signing. And I took a picture with you, took a picture with Tom, but I skipped over Yuri because, you know, I was all young and quiet and awkward, and he was kind of sitting there all quiet and awkward, and you just let him know, let Yuri know, I'm so sorry, because if I had the chance, I would meet that solid drumming beast um, if I had the chance today. So I definitely regret um, skipping that. Uh, last but not least, uh, if you search my name, Ryan Hayden, on any music streaming service, I covered Broken Hearted. Um, Tom said he liked it, and I hope you give it a listen because uh, it's definitely one of my favorites, and I did it because you guys inspired me so much. Uh, last but not least, um, I tried contacting the MXPX store and Ernie Ball directly. I know it's a long shot, but I've been trying to obtain one of your pick guards forever. I would buy one in a heartbeat, um, and it would go on my Ernie Ball Stingray base that I only got because I'm of course, into MXPX as a kid. I even went so far to have the uh, Poconatchee Punkhead laser engraved on the back plate. So I know you probably can't, but just wanted to throw that in there. Love you, man. You uh big, big influence on my whole life. And uh hope you're good. Thanks for all the years of music. And uh take care. Thanks, Mike. Dude, thanks, Ryan. I'll, I'll check out the, um, the cover. I'll try to find it. Um, man. Yuri is a beast, and next time you're in, next time you're around, please get Yuri, talk to him. He's a great guy. He'll definitely sign whatever you need. Um, <laughs> pick guards. I know you want to talk about the pick guards, Ryan. Um, I don't have a good answer for you. My answer is going to be I'm not quite sure because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that Ernie Ball does for me. Um, so for those that don't know, Ernie Ball has made me custom bases for, I don't know, almost 20 years now. I, I, I don't even know how long. It's been a long time, probably since 2000. Let's just say around 2000 to now. So like 20 years, you know, uh, and more. So, uh, and now I have a Mike Herrera signature base. <laughs> you can get it at ErnieBall.com. Um, and... It's kind of mind blowing, you know. There's a lot of mind blowing things, but uh, <laughs> that's one of them. But the thing is, is like they they started out making me just bases for me that nobody else can buy, and now you can buy one of my bases through Ernie Ball, and it's exactly what I play. It's it's the the exact setup, and it's got the engraved pick guard, and that comes with the signature base and. I don't know. I mean, uh, to answer your question, no, you cannot get one. But I have, I think we've given some out, like for like contests now and again. Like we've given one or two out, and I think we sold one or two for like a Kickstarter project when, we, you know, it was like part of the perk you got or something like that. But like, 
but yeah, for the most part, there's just not a lot of them because they're they're made kind of one at a time here and there. Like I'll be like, hey, can I get an, a couple more pick guards? I need a, a black one. I need a, you know, like this and that. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't think it would be easy for them to do, and it probably wouldn't be worth them doing, but. Maybe someday we can get a batch made and people could buy them from the store. But I would not hold your breath. Uh, I would say, I would say, uh, huh. I would say get a base. That's, you know, my signature base is going to be the easiest way to get one of those. Or maybe somebody bought one of my base and, and wants to sell the thing and put a different pick guard on it. Then maybe somebody else is selling one. That's, that's always possible. But anyway, Ryan, I appreciate you, and uh, man, thanks for doing that cover. I'm gonna check it out. Let's uh, let's get let's get a one last message. Let's let's do one last one, and then we'll call it. All right. Here we go. Hey, Mike. This is uh, this is Spencer. Um, my girlfriend Gabby and I went to the MXPX show in Anaheim. The uh, funny thing is, is we're actually located in Fort Orchard, like 20 minutes from where you guys are. Uh, where you guys are from, uh, surprised me with these tickets for the show at Christmas, and you guys really killed it. Um, you actually were my introduction to punk, and uh, you guys were uh, what inspired me to start playing bass. Uh, anyway, I have a question about your guys' touring rig. Um, I know that I've, I've been following you guys for a really long time, you know, and uh, I was wondering if you guys rent your gear when you do, like, a show, like, like when you're not a uh, – you know, doing, like, these long tours like I know you guys used to do. And I was just wondering if you guys, you know, rented from, like, a shop, used the back line from a, a venue, or if you guys still bring your own gear. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. So, yeah. Right on. Get popular. Spencer from Port Orchard. That's so cool. Uh, thanks for coming out all the way. Thanks for traveling. Anybody that traveled to the show, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we do have a, a, a lot going on with Backline, and each show is a little different. So let me just break it down for you. If we're touring, if we're doing like our own transportation across the U.S., let's say, um, like we used to do so many times, and if we're – leaving from Bremerton, which we've done plenty of times. Um, we'll carry all our own gear in a trailer um, or in bus bays sometimes, like, but usually a trailer behind a bus. And it'll be cabinets, drums, uh, everything. Just everything you see. Uh, guitars, heads, um, all the supplies, merch. For fly-out shows, so uh, lately... We've been doing a lot of fly-out shows, and, or at least the last few years. Um, so we fly out. Let's say Anaheim. You were there in Anaheim. Um, it depends. It depends on the show. Every show is a little different. So you talk to your production person at the venue, and you go, hey, what do we got? What do we need? Blah, 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 blah. And they'll be like, oh, we have, uh, we have two cabinets you can use or this or that, or we have nothing. So you just, depending on what it is. You, you can borrow cabinets, you can borrow things, you know, like mic stands. You don't have to bring your own mic stands usually because the venues have mic stands. Mic cables, XLR mic cables. Usually you don't have to bring your own mic cables because venues have mic cables. But venues don't usually have a drum set. They don't usually have a guitar cabinets. These days, that's kind of changing. Like over the years uh, in the U.S., more and more venues are starting to have provided gear not like everything you might need but some gear and this has been a thing over in europe a lot it's, it's been a thing in japan you just show up with your guitar and you can plug in and, and the gear's there but it's not the case here in the u.s we still um with fly outs we still we, we fly out with our guitars of course we fly out with microphones we fly out with um, all the supplies we need uh, strings straps pedals um and nowadays actually uh in the past we had rented cabinets rented drum sets rented heads uh heads meaning guitar amps the actual amp part of the 
uh, guitar amp or bass amp or something like that, the actual amplifier. Um, but these days, we actually fly with our own guitar amp heads and bass head. So three of those items. We fly also with our own in-ear monitor rig, which is uh, wireless units. Um, they're like rack units that you put in a, <laughs> a rack and then it goes in a Pelican case and all that. Anyway, um, so now we're, we're so much more compact and self self uh, contained than we really ever have been. Now we still need cabinets, although technically with with our guitar stuff, we could go DI into the PA and wouldn't even need cabinets, but we need that those cabinets on stage for feedback because we like to have stage noise. We like things to be live and feeling real. So even though we're on in-ears, I still want a real sound coming out of the amps and all that. Um, but yeah, so we, we travel with all our own sort of heads and guitars and in-ear uh, monitor rig, but we don't travel with cabinets because those are the big speakers that you see up on stage. We got to rent those, so we rent those from a company. Somebody, you know, people, you know, company brings it out, drops it off. We do our thing. They show up at the end of the night and grab it. And um, we use our endorsements, of course, Orange amplifier uh, amplifiers, and um, Ernie Ball, and Takamini, and DW drum sets, and um, I'm sure there's a lot more Temple uh, pedals and um, Keeley pedals, Temple pedal. Boards, Keeley pedals, uh, I mean, walrus pedals. So there's a bunch of people we work with, but um, but it's all just there. You know, we we uh, we bring that stuff usually, or if we can't carry it with us, we'll rent it. We'll rent it from a company, and if it's w something we in we get endorsed by, we'll get a discount on that. Uh, but we usually have to pay some sort of like service fee, um, cartage or prep fee, something like that, just to like make it worth having all those people bring the stuff to us, you know, if we weren't paying for it, how do they pay, th you know, how would we pay them? So, so we do get a discount on some of that stuff, but it's getting more and more expensive. Uh, you know, every year it gets more and more expensive to fly out, to rent gear, to do what we do. Um, but, you know, we love it. We definitely love it. And uh, we're gonna keep going. Um, we're just going to keep, we're going to keep making what we do better. We're going to keep tweaking. And um, we definitely had some issues with our in-ear monitor rig. It was on the first show we ever used it on. Um, we realized it overheated. <laughs> what? How is this possible? Well, it's possible. I mean, it's a PA and it's not meant to, I guess, stay on for all night, you know? So, so we got to do some things like, okay, do a sound check, then turn it off, and then turn it back on right before the gig, and voila, it worked. So, uh, so Anaheim, we had no in ears, no monitors really whatsoever because we didn't do a sound check for that. So we just had to have like, all right, throw me some vocals or something, and, and it worked, and it was great. But if I didn't sing that great that night, that's that's my excuse. Um, but it happens. You know, there's always something that's going to break at some point. You know, you just hope it doesn't happen during a set, during a show. All right, I hope uh, I hope that that uh, answered your question. Um, to recap, we rent gear and we also bring some of our own, but mostly, you know, most of the big stuff is all rented. DW drum sets, we rent all that. Yuri used to bring a snare and like he used to bring like even a kick pedal. Um, but over the years, it's just like, yeah, I mean, as long as I get the r kick pedal from DW and I get a good drum set and cymbals, I'm good. No big deal. I got my sticks, blah, 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 blah. You know, back in the day, it'd always be like drummers didn't want to play on an s a different drum set because it felt weird. And it was like, it's kind of similar to a guitar. Uh, it's kind of weird to play on somebody else's guitar sometimes. But like, I think after a while, when you just play a million different guitars, you figure it out pretty quickly. Um, and I think that's the same with Yuri. Yuri's really great at adapting. He's never complains. He sets up his own drums most of the time because we're always struggling to find 
more and more crew, but uh, it's just, it's just, you know, it's like Yuri's great at what he does, and I, I feel like we don't really need somebody to dr set up his drums for him because there's always something he has to change. There's always, okay, let me change this. He used to have a drum tech for years, and it was great. Like, Leprechaun, love you. He, he was also my bass tech at the time, but he would do both. But, um, you know, but these days it's like, it's cool to be able to, to do your gear. I remember years and years ago, so many, this is early 2000s, um, Leprechaun and uh, Pete, Stinky Pete at the time, one of our guitar techs, um, th they got mad at us for this or that. I don't know what it was. And they were like, we're quitting. I'm talking to my lawyer. And they quit before we even had a sound check. I'm like, what? All right. Okay. So, guys, we got to set up our own gear today. <laughs> I remember, like, trying to set up my bass amp. And I figured it out. But I was like, I have no idea how to do this. Like, not no idea. But, like, I, I get amps and all that, like, obviously. But I hadn't set up my rig in a long time. And that made me – it it opened my eyes where I was just like, I need to know how to set up my own gear. Like, I'm never going to not know how to set up my own gear. And so nowadays, yeah, sometimes I'll set up my own gear. Sometimes Brad will set – most of the time, Brad Blanco will set it up. Brad's awesome. Uh, no complaints. And, it, but I know exactly what to do. I know, ex I know everything. I know the monitor rig, the in-ear monitor rig. I know my bass rig. I even know kind of how to set up the guitar rigs. Um, I think I could do it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just – you know, I, I don't want to be in that position again. And, you know, what's funny is later that day, they came back. They did the show that night. They were fine. They were just mad, you know. I, I don't know. Uh, for whatever. Probably for a real good reason. <laughs> but, but it's just funny. It's funny to think about, like, MXPX was, was mean to their crew, and, like, th so they quit. Like, pff, no. We're so nice. We're so, I mean, not always. Like, sure, we made them work. Sure, they'd get yelled at sometimes, but <laughs> no, we're pretty nice. Uh, we're in it together is, is really what I, what I realized is, like, we're all part of this. Like, it's not me sitting here and then the other people doing the work. No, I'm, I'm doing work. They're doing work. We're working together. So I think... Uh, it's always a work in progress with our crew. Uh, we we have people come and go. Um, you know, people people live their lives. You know, you, you're not always going to get somebody that's going to stick with you your whole career, because somebody may be with you for a couple years and then they get an opportunity to do something else and they they take that opportunity as they should if if they're passionate about it. So. I've kind of realized that over the years is just like everything in life is temporary. Backline is temporary. Uh, touring is temporary. So when we go somewhere, it may be our last time ever there. You just never know, right? Like, I hope it's not, but I always try to have that mindset. If I show up in a venue, I soak it in. And I try to, try to just ha be mindful of how great we have it, how, how amazing this life is that we have and that, that we get to sing songs for people, you know, and, and that's obviously that's the pinnacle. That's the best part of it. But um, all the other things that go into it are pre-show pre -show rituals, getting the back line together. Like that's all work and hard to do sometimes, but it's great. I love it. And, and, and I can't wait for the future because the future is now. I mean, there's so much going on um, in the world all the time. You would think that it would make me, it would bum me out, you know, but, and it does sometimes, but like I always realize, wow, no, like I've been doing punk rock for 30 years, write songs, record albums, put out music, play shows. Uh, obviously, there's <laughs> all the other things, podcasting. I have it good. I have it so good. And I just gotta, I gotta be grateful. I have to just take a moment, take a moment and just 
feel good about life, you know. And so I, I encourage you guys to do the same, you know. Focus on the good things. Um, the bad's going to always come. You know, crazy things will happen in your life, and that's, that's going to keep you on your toes. It's going to keep you from getting bored. It's going to keep you from relaxing too much, right? But it, some individual things can be bad, but overall, it's like, you know, this is part of life. You know, we just got to deal with it and, and solve those issues, solve those problems, and move on. And, and there's going to be a next, the next problem the next day. So that's where I'm at. I love Mondays. Um, I love the show Severance. I love punk rock. I love uh, my band MXPX. And I love you guys for, for listening and for supporting all these years. And um, I appreciate you. So I'd love to hear what you think about the podcast. It's been morphing a little bit. It's a little different than it was a couple years ago. And whether or not you like that, honestly, I don't think it's going to change anything I do. But um, <laughs> I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean, like, if you don't like this podcast that I'm doing right now, I, I don't care. I really don't care. Because um, I'm doing it. I'm doing it for me as well as I'm doing it for you. I'm not just doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. Like, I'm not doing it for money. Like, my, my mom, M Michelle, you know Michelle, my mom, she runs the MXPX merch store. And she was like, the other a few weeks ago, she was like, does the podcast make you money? Like, does it make any money? And I'm like, oh, um, well, it used to. We used to run ads. We used to do ads. We had an ad agency called Midroll. And they would send you ads, and I would talk about, you know, bed sheets and, and mattresses and <laughs> things that we all need in life. But, uh, but at, at after a certain point, it was like, it was hard to get, I did get paid, but it was hard to get paid. It was like, it would like stack up, and I'd be like, why am I waiting a year to get paid on this stuff, you know? So it was just like, eh, it's not worth it to me. It's not... It's not enough. M I mean, we did get quite a, a, a bit of money if you added it up, but it was like, it's not worth me stressing over doing these ads and like having to like constantly talk and blah, 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 and read an ad. Now, hey, that could change in the future, but I've been going pretty strong for years without ads. And so back to my mom, I was like, yeah, I mean, we used to do ads and we made money and, you know, we did some gambling stuff that was fun. Um, that they paid us for and, and all that. But ultimately, like, this is for the MXPX community and the community that, like, maybe likes my solo stuff as well and the punk rock community because I talk to a lot of my peers. I talk to other band members, other uh, people in bands and musicians and artists and photographers and, you know, the list goes on. You know, you li if you if you've... You're probably not listening to this podcast, this episode, unless you've been a listener, I would assume. Um, this, would be, this would be a great podcast to listen for your first episode, but I would say it's a lot different than a lot of my episodes. So anyway, my point was, if you've noticed that I've been doing things, it's just because I've been, I don't know, I've been just doing different things. And so I'll, I'll be like, okay, let's do this episode and, and do it by myself or this or that. So um, I think I'm going to continue, to be honest. And I'm going to continue to have guests. And uh, I'm gonna <laughs> you know, who knows what will happen next. But um, I still would love to hear what you think about it. But like I said, if you hate it, I don't care. <laughs> still going to do it. All right, uh, big shout out to uh, producer Bob, Bob McKnight. Um, his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show, is a really great chill podcast. If you like just to hear interesting conversation but not get super political or super uh, into, like, controversy, his podcast is fun. It's, it's just a nice, fun, lighthearted podcast that I, I find myself – I'll listen to a bit here and there – and uh, it brings a smile to my face. All right. Thank you, guys. MXPeaks.com for all your merch, vinyl, all that. Love you guys for it. And uh, stay tuned for what's next, all right? I know what's coming next, but I'm not ready. We are not ready to announce anything, all right? Peace. Thank you.